to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Dr. Keith Ellis, when he has a dream, it's 100%. I mean, you can put it in the bank. And he told me that he had a dream of what is going to happen. And I'm going to tell you something. He saw the most amazing outpouring of miracles. But before I even get into that, I recently did a special on an international television show, and he was my guest. And the presence of God just moved out like a river. And if only the people that were receiving in their home, that they recognized what was going on, all things are possible. You recognize it, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Is there a supernatural dimension, a world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Oh. <laughs> ah, shalom, World Harvest Television, WHT, uh, and the Lassie Broadcasting Network. And I want to thank you for partnering with us on this special live program. And I want to remind you, submit your prayer requests and praise reports for healings and miracles. And uh, Keith and I, at a certain point in the show, are going to pray over these. And uh, you can keep in touch with us through Facebook and the Twitter pages uh, using the hashtag Sid Roth Live. Well, Keith, what are we going to expect for this show? What is God showing you? Well, Sid, you know, as you know, I'm a dreamer, and I have many dreams every night. I've been doing that, you know, most of my whole life since I was five years old. It began, and I'm still dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. I'm a dreamer just like Joseph was in the Bible and Daniel. And I see these incredible dreams. And what I saw was there's going to be an incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit here on this particular show. God is going to do all kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles. Many people are going to get a breakthrough because of this program. People are going to begin to uh, be uh, e elevated in their gifts of the Spirit. Things are going to begin to happen. They're going to begin to sleep better, feel better, get up with joy. There's going to be revival in their heart and in their house. It's going to be incredible what God's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait. All right. Yeah, Keith, Keith is a seer. Uh, by the word, you can figure out what it means. He sees things. I kind of feel things, and it's really a, an interesting combination. I describe what I'm feeling, and he tells me what's going on. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but Keith, uh, you have seen some amazing things, and uh, I'd like people to kind of understand uh, this gifting you have. It's a very unique gifting. Uh, it really uh, it started many years ago, but you had an encounter with Jesus when your son, uh, he was brain dead. What was wrong with your son? Uh, my son, Justin, uh, contacted uh, bacterial spinal meningitis when he was at school. He was six years old. And while he was at school, he just breathed it in, didn't know it. They thought he got it at school or maybe, you know, walking up the sidewalk or maybe I, even the, maybe even the day before. They weren't exactly sure to pinpoint that. But it was so bad that several people had already died from the disease. And then all of a sudden, he rolls out of the bed in a coma, and we end up in three hospitals in one night. And the diagnosis was horrible that he had bacterial spinal meningitis. He had absolutely no brain activity whatsoever. Brain dead. Brain dead, yeah. And so after many days... But the, what, what, what did the doctor say uh, would happen to him? Well, they said that, you know, if he were to survive, his heart kept beating and he kept breathing. Did they think he'd survive? Well, no, they, didn't, they weren't sure because they, it was such a bad case. They've done everything they could do, and we thank the Lord for good doctors. They kept him alive. But what I want to thank God for is that 
they said, and they believe this, that if he did not have any change, that he would be like a vegetable. In other words, he's brain dead, he'll either pass on away or he'll be like a vegetable. But I had an encounter with Jesus that when, changed my life. When you had this encounter, did you see him? Did you hear him? Did you feel him? Well, well, Sid, I'll tell you what happened. When I, that night when I left the hospital, because of the, the huge, huge outpouring of people that came, the huge response from the doctors, they brought in team after team after team because this was contagious and it was very deadly. And so he was isolated. And then after all the reports came in, things were so bad. And so it upset me so much that I asked my wife, could I go home? And I went home that night. Now, here's the problem with me. I had got out of church. I wasn't right with God. I wasn't where I should be. It got my feelings hurt, got out of church, and, you know, I, I felt like I didn't even have the right to pray. But when, as I was going home, I was repenting that night because I didn't know what else to do. I was crying, help, Lord, help. I mean, this is it. You've got to do something. You've got to help us here. And so when I went into the house, taking off my jacket and everything to get ready to take a shower, I sat on the bed, and I said, Lord, will you forgive me? The moment I said, Lord, will you forgive me, the, the room lit up like a football stadium. I'd never seen anything like it in my life, even though I'd had visions at five and growing mm -hmm. up. I'd never had this kind of, this is, this is a, you know, this was just unbelievable light. And there stood Jesus. And Jesus said to me three profound words that knocked me backwards. And, you know, I see sometimes when I say words, people go back in the spirit, you know. And what happened was when he said, I thought, you know, I thought if Jesus ever, you know, came and talked to me, we'd just sit down and have a conversation. But that wasn't what it was. He was saying something that would change my life forever. He said, go to church. Okay. So what Keith did, he got in his car and he drove to the first church. He went inside and then he heard another message from Jesus. What was it? You know, said I got in that church, I was just, it was a miracle I got in it. The guy that was there was stuck there and he couldn't leave the pastor. And I, he, I asked him, could I go? And he said, yeah. I ran down to the altar, fell on the, my knees. I got down on my knees. Kneel before God, your maker. I got on my knees. I said, Lord, you appeared to me. I was shaking like this. I mean, just shaking. I, I was excited like I am now. Because, <laughs> I mean, I knew by that presence, something good was about to happen. And so I, I was repenting and I said, Lord, Lord, just forgive me. Take me. Use me. And he said, that's all I've ever wanted you to say in your whole life hmm. is use me. And so I said, Lord, use me. And he said, get up, go back and prophesy to everybody that your son has just got a miracle. Now, he, he decides to prophesy to the doctors. Uh, they, they think they should give him a drug to calm him <laughs> down. But guess what? A miracle happened. His son recovered. And since that point, I have to say you're one of the most grateful thankful believers in the Messiah I have ever met. You spend all your time, it appears to me, praying and thanking God. I, and, and as far as I'm concerned, that encounter you had with the Lord and your life of gratefulness has produced major, major miracles and words and dreams and vision. For instance, this may be hard for you to believe, but I believe it. He had a woman in his congregation that needed knee surgery. I think it was the next day. Tell me about her. Yeah, there was a lady that came into one of our meetings, and she had a, she said, I've got to have surgery on my knee. And I'm standing right there in front of her, and I said, well, I feel like God's going to give you a new knee. I, don't, I believe you're going to have a total knee replacement. And all of a sudden, her knee went pop, 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 and guess what? She said, there's no pain. I said, run. She ran. She ran around and around. She's screaming, thank you, Jesus. The pain's gone. The swelling's gone. Everything went away that was causing the problem. And suddenly, she knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God had gave her a total knee replacement. And she was headed back to the doctor last time I saw her to praise God. And you know what? I had one happen before that where a lady got two brand new knees, went back to the doctor. And you know what? They said, you have two new knees. God had did a creative miracle just like he did for my son when he was brain dead, no hope, and the next day he sat up totally healed, didn't have to go to therapy, didn't have to have any rehab, and all that's good, but the doctors even grabbed him and kissed him and said, we've never seen anything like but this. How is this? <laughs> but uh, but, but this, this begs a question. How is your son 
today? Is he a little slow in his thinking, having been brain dead? No, no, no. In fact, it's right the opposite. When he got up, it was such a great miracle. They brought in so many specialists from all over the country. They, they couldn't, they just couldn't believe what had happened. But, you know, the reports changed so drastically. And by the way, somebody's report is going to get better. I see it right now in the spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, that there's going to be some good news next time you go to the doctor in Jesus' name. Now, Keith told me about a dream he had recently involving women. Tell me about that dream. Well, Sid, you know, I, I, I dream all the time, and, and, I, I, and the reason I pray all the time is, you know, what I was just saying a minute ago, when, when Justin got up, he, he, you know, he was totally normal. And it had to, they t checked his IQ. It was that of a genius. And today it's the <laughs> same way. I mean, God did such a great miracle. So now I pray all the time, all that I can, and then I dream. I had a dream about a woman. It was the strangest dream the other night. It's for me and you went to the other place that we went on television. And I had this dream, and I, 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 all during the night I saw a comic book. And in the comic book, the cover of it was a superhero, and the superhero was a woman. And, and I remember my children reading this. The boys read it when they were little. It was Wonder called, Woman. Yeah, there yeah. it is. <laughs> it was Wonder Woman. And I, I dreamed I, it. I, you, you remember Wonder Woman? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I dreamed this all night long, the same thing about Wonder Woman, and all night long. And I thought, when I, was, I hadn't came out of the dream yet, but I said, Lord, what is this? Why am I dreaming about a comic book character, a superhero? <laughs> that done a lot of good. He said, because I'm about to do a wonder among women of the world. The women of the world are about to be blessed. Uh, many of you, I'm talking to women right now, have had prophetic words, and many years have gone by, and nothing has happened. You told me what type of ministries are about ready to pop up yeah. in women. Yeah. You know, I, I said to the Lord, I said, you're going to do a wonder among women. He said, they're even going to wonder. It's going to be such a quick thing that starts happening. They're, go they're going to have all kinds of breakthroughs and healings and miracles among the women. He said, you know what it's, what's going to happen? He said, I'm going to put the Catherine Kuhlman anointing on the women. Okay. Some of you have actually had that prophesied to you. Now's your <laughs> chance. Now's your opportunity. But it's not just that. It's, I, I guess, historically, women have been beaten down over the centuries. This is payback. <laughs> this is your moment, <laughs> yeah. Wonder Woman. <laughs> okay, God told you many years ago, and I've observed this about you, right. not to talk neg negative. What exactly did he tell you? Yeah, uh, many years ago in the 90s, you know, I was just like everybody. I was just talking, and mm -hmm. I was saying, this is happening, that's happening bad, this is happening, just like everybody else was. Right. And one day, I was doing a three-day fast. I was laying in the floor in my office doing a three-day fast to pray for the sick. And as I was praying, the Lord said, I'm going to change your ministry. You're going to be an encourager, an edifier, a lifter up, or a lift up my people in the last days, which we're in the last days. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. We just know we're in the last days. And he said, what you're going to have to do to call, be able to lift people is you're going to have to quit talking negative. I said, but uh, you know, how do I talk? And he said, you know, he said just, and he gave me the title of a book that I've, I've just written. He said, start telling people something good. Find something good about people. Find something good about the world. Start talking good. What you speak creates. And I begin to, I begin to speak good things, and I begin to watch my words. And, you know, because I have that Samuel anointing, that gift, the seer, the, my words don't fall to the ground, Sid. And I begin to be able to speak things into people's life. It's, it's been incredible. Well, what, what would happen if God did that with your words? Do you know some people would be dead? If you're, you're, if you're watch, doing what everyone seems to be doing these days, looking at the political commentators and then like a little parrot parroting back what they're saying, do you know what? That's their job. That's not your job. Your job is to speak good news. Yes, yes, yeah. And the, yes. Truth, the truth of the matter is any fool can talk bad news but it takes a man and a woman of God to speak good news. As you think in your heart, so are you. Why would you want to be speaking from the second heaven, the 
chatter of the demonic when you can be speaking from the third heaven, the chatter of God. Ooh. What do you yes. want to happen? Wow. Wow. Uh, well, Keith told me he had a favorite song. And he told me about the person that wrote the song and did it. Well, guess who we have as a special <laughs> music guest today? Jim Sonero. He it was, for 22 years, he was the worship leader for Benny Hinn. Do you know? Wow. And I said, Jim, what song do you want to play? And he says, first word out of his mouth was the song that Keith tells me every time it's played, miracles yeah. happen. Yeah. I'm going to walk over to this set <laughs> with Jim, and I want to talk to him. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Everywhere you look, there's conflict and violence. We hear the bad news instead of the good news every day. Stress and anxiety appears to be the norm and not the exception. It's affecting many with a manifestation of emotional and physical sickness. Yet the one true God of Israel is referred to as Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And he promised, I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. Leviticus 26, 6. Keith Ellis wants to share with you divine keys on how you can access and live in God's supernatural land of peace. Call now and get Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400. Through this powerful revelation by Keith Ellis about living in God's land of peace, you will receive fresh and renewed hope for your future even in the midst of the present world shaking. See insomnia healed and begin to have sweet dreams from heaven. Begin to hear God's voice and direction clearly. Start to make better decisions to live in wisdom and walk in the destiny and purpose that God has set before you. Find that demonic interference will no longer affect you. Experience supernatural healing in your mind, spirit, soul, and body. You will also receive a copy of Keith Ellis' book, One minute with God. Through this book, you will enter into life-changing, ongoing God encounters for the rest of your life. Get prophetic words you need concerning your future. Successfully encounter the glory of God's presence, releasing miracles, prophecy, and revelation. Learn how to transfer this same anointing to others who need God encounters. Included on the audio CD teaching is a special prayer of impartation by Keith Ellis, so you can begin to access God's land of peace. One minute with Jesus is worth a lifetime of favor, a lifetime of favor. That's all it takes is that one minute because you need nugget after nugget after nugget and the overflow from Keith's life is going to pour on you. Don't miss out on getting Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400 or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9400 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. <laughs> well, I am so pleased to have Jim Sonero here. I found out a few things about him 22 years ago. He had a profound encounter with the Holy Spirit. What did the Holy Spirit tell you? Well, he told me that a new season was about to begin in my life. And uh, as I began to, like Keith said, speak it out of my mouth, I wrote it down. You always should write it down. Habakkuk says, write the vision. Wrote it down. I began to speak it out of my mouth. And now I'm living what I saw and what the Lord spoke to me in those days. Well, seven years ago, I mean, here he's for 22 years. He's with Benny Hinn. 
He's happy. And as far as I'm concerned, there are few people on the planet that can take a, a group of people that don't know each other in every city and make the whole choir, if you've seen the Benny Hinn choirs and everything, and make them sound wonderful. Uh, and, and he's very happy and very content. But seven years ago, he stepped out obeyed what the Holy Spirit said, and what did God do as far as your anointing? I prayed the prayer of Jabez, which of mm -hmm. course says, bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, and that your hand would be on me. And I was on a flight to Mexico, and I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way I can describe it. And I was caught up on that flight, and I began to see what God was going to do in the future. And again, I wrote it down, and I began to share with just a few confidants that I could trust in the Spirit. But it took seven more years for that to happen. And then again, in 2010, when I was in a time of fasting, and prayer, I heard him say four words to me, this is the time. And as soon as I heard those words, I knew I had to step out. And the moment I did, the anointing came on my life in a different way. I've always been anointed for worship and I've always been able to speak and preach. But now, you know, I believe that when you're in your assignment, that's where your gift comes out of you. <laughs> and when the glory of God came on my life and I stepped out, suddenly the word of knowledge began to flow through me. Suddenly people were getting healed in the services. As were the word. you expecting that? I mean, here you're, you know, you're in the background almost. And all of a sudden you're, uh, the same things that are going on with Benny Hinn are going on with you. Were you more shocked than anyone else? Well, yes and no, only because he had told me seven yeah. years prior that it was going to happen. But yet, you know, you hang on for a, a while and you, you get discouraged at times. Sure. But, but just before, about a year before that, I was in a service with Benny and we were worshiping as I always do. And he was anointing, imparting the anointing on people. And all of a sudden he spins around and he says, Jim, are you ready? And my spirit knew exactly what he was saying and what the spirit was saying. And I rent, went down, we grabbed hands and we started worshiping. All of a sudden he says, go lay hands on the people. People. And to God be the glory, the anointing poured out in that place mightily and thousands were being touched by the power of God. So I knew he was about to launch me into a new season. It was glorious. Tell me about a song that worldwide releases miracles. How did you get this song? Tell me the circumstances. It's called uh, Fill This Temple. Amen. Well, I had just begun working with Benny, actually, and uh, one morning I was just laying in bed and I woke up out of my sleep. All of a sudden, this song, which is really a prayer, poured out of my spirit to the Lord. And it says, let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Fill this temple, Lord. And, it, and the moment that I ran to the piano, my baby, my son was just a baby and ran to the piano and very quietly did it at six o'clock in the morning and, and uh, taught it to the congregation. And it just went from there and the spirit of the Lord has used it mightily. Miracles happen, I tell you, when Amen. he does this song. Miracles happen. Jim Sonero, fill this temple. Stand Amen. up and get Amen. your temple Amen. filled. Amen. At home, stand up. Amen. Haggai says that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Put your hand on your heart if you're at home or here and say, I'm the house. The former house was Israel, but the latter house is the church that's you that's me so lift your hands now and worship him and welcome the glory of god into the temple hallelujah Spirit, let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I long to know your glory. Sing it with me. To know your glory, I want to offer, I want to offer the sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit. to fill the temple with his Holy Spirit today. Fill this temple, Lord, 
with your spirit once again. Oh yes, Jesus, we ask you, let my heart, let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation. Let me be a holy habitation. Where your spirit is pleased, where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Lord, I long to know your glory. to offer I want to offer the sacrifice of praise fill this temple Lord fill this temple Lord with your spirit once again oh cry out fill this temple Lord with your spirit once again fill this temple it says they sought him just to touch the hem of his garment and the Bible says as many as touched him were healed well how do we touch him today we can't physically touch the hem but we can touch him through our worship today so why don't you just worship the Lord wherever you are lift up his glorious name and tell him you deserve the glory Come to bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Let me hear you sing it in the audience. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands and worship. Now we bless your holy name. Your hands one more time, sing your grace. 
Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're an awesome God. When we come back, oh, you don't know what you're about ready to get if you only knew. You see, my friend Keith, he had a dream, remember, 100% when he has dreams, in which God told him that he could enter a land. It's called the land of peace whenever he wanted to. This is a land where there's no fear, a land where there's no worry, a land where there's no stress, and he wants to teach you how you can enter the land of peace. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Everywhere you look, there's conflict and violence. We hear the bad news instead of the good news every day. Stress and anxiety appears to be the norm and not the exception. It's affecting many with a manifestation of emotional and physical sickness. Yet the one true God of Israel is referred to as Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And he promised, I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. Leviticus 26, 6. Keith Ellis wants to share with you divine keys on how you can access and live in God's supernatural land of peace. Call now and get Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400. Through this powerful revelation by Keith Ellis about living in God's land of peace, you will receive fresh and renewed hope for your future even in the midst of the present world shaking. See insomnia healed and begin to have sweet dreams from heaven. Begin to hear God's voice and direction clearly. Start to make better decisions to live in wisdom and walk in the destiny and purpose that God has set before you. Find that demonic interference will no longer affect you. Experience supernatural healing in your mind, spirit, soul, and body. You will also receive a copy of Keith Ellis' book, One minute with God. Through this book, you will enter into life-changing, ongoing God encounters for the rest of your life. Get prophetic words you need concerning your future. Successfully encounter the glory of God's presence, releasing miracles, prophecy, and revelation. Learn how to transfer this same anointing to others who need God encounters. Included on the audio CD teaching is a special prayer of impartation by Keith Ellis, so you can begin to access God's land of peace. One minute with Jesus is worth a lifetime of favor, a lifetime of favor. That's all it takes is that one minute because you need nugget after nugget after nugget and the overflow from Keith's life is going to pour on you. Don't miss out on getting Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400 or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9400 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. <laughs> Keith, you told me that you had a revelation from God in a dream about a land, and the land is called the land of peace. What did God show you in the dream? You know, Sid, I, you know, as we're going and traveling and working and doing things and ministering, you know, I came in one night, I was really stressed out, you know, just full of anxiety. I'd been on the road a lot and traveling and had got in late in that night, and I was just so, I just, I was just really too tired to even pray. And so I got in my recliner and leaned back where I do a lot of my prayer, and I just didn't feel like even praying. Just, I was just so tired, but I couldn't go to sleep. And so all of a sudden, I just leaned, closed my eyes, and I went into a dream. And I'm a dreamer. That's what I do. And while I was dreaming, the Lord said, Son, I'm going to take you to a place of peace. It's called the land of peace. 
And I said, you are? In the dream, we're talking mm -hmm. back and forth. I said, you are? And he said, yeah. He said that uh, I'm going to lift this stress off of you, and I'm going to lift some of this burden off of you. And he said, I'm going to take you there. And all of a sudden, the next thing I knew, it was like I was in the Garden of Eden before, you know, Adam and Eve ever fell. It was the most perfect, beautiful place I'd ever been in my life. And while I was in that uh, state of mind, in that place with the Lord, the power was so strong, I kept thinking, boy, the glory and the power of God is in this place. God has brought me to a place that is so pure and so holy, and I'm in this place, and I, I, I got so excited. So when I woke up the next morning, I wasn't stressed out. I didn't have the anxiety. I didn't have the, you know, the tiredness after you minister for hours on your feet. I didn't have that. And I said, wow, I hope I can do this again. And I took <laughs> off, you know, on the road and I went back out and I came in and that night I, I laid back, I went back to sleep and whoop, right back in there I went. And the next morning I woke back up and I felt like I was, you know, I'm fixing to turn 61 years old. I felt like I was 18 years old. I was so energized. I mean, literally. I mean, I got up and I was so excited. I, I said, man, I've got to, I just, I just got to get in here some more. So I started pushing myself to get in there. Every time I'd go, I'd say, Lord, take me to the land of peace. And what happened was I began to experiment. God said, when you're preaching, talk about this because what you say your words have such power as you begin to teach about this, you're going to help other people begin to get relief from stress and anxiety and heaviness and restlessness where they can't sleep. And they're going to begin to enter into the land of peace at their, in their own homes, in their own beds. They're going to begin to enjoy a peaceful time of me because I am the Prince of Peace. My name is Jesus. Tell, tell me, how do we go into this land of peace you were talking about? Joshua. Yeah. I'm, well, you know, I, I was thinking about, you know, Joshua, the, the, the whole story. One of the nights in one of the dreams that I had, I saw that where Joshua, you know, came up to the, you know, he's bringing Israel in. It's time. You know, Moses has now come off the scene. This is a new generation. And I think we are the Joshua generation right now, fixing to see the greatest move of God into the land of peace and everything else we ever saw in our lives. But we got to, he got to brought him up to the edge, you know, of this land. And God gave him an instruction. And the instruction was, he says, now arise and go over. Well, you know, when he told him that, to look at the obstacle because the Jordan is out of its banks, and that's the borderline to the blessing. And by the way, there's some people that are on the border of your blessing right now watching this, and what I'm seeing in the Spirit is God's going to give you a breakthrough, and you're going to enter into the land of peace, prosperity, and blessings like you've never saw before the end of this year. I saw that. Tell, tell, tell me about the dream you had about the goose. Oh, yeah. I just had that last night. Last night I was so excited about being here with you. I'm always excited because the anointing is so great here. I love to come and be around you because this is such a powerful place. And then Jim playing that beautiful music, fill this temple, and now the power's moving. Angels are all around us. It's so exciting. So last night, you know, I went and got in my chair, leaned back, was thinking about coming here, and I went into a dream. And I, I came to the land of peace in the dream. It was this beautiful lake. And I looked up and the sky was so clear seed and it was so blue. It felt like I didn't have a worry in the world. The meadows were just, it, the sunshine was on them and it was so beautiful. And I was looking around and all of a sudden, as I was I saw some movement to my right. And I looked down near the lake and a big, beautiful white goose stood up. And I thought, well, that's strange. That is the prettiest goose I've ever saw. And you know, when, as that goose was standing up, I noticed there was something under the goose. So you know how I am in the dream. I went down to take a look, and it was a golden egg. Yeah. And then I looked around, and there was, there was geese that were, that were nesting in there around that lake in the land of peace. And they all started just standing up. And I just walked around, and I began to look. And I had this dream several times last night. And I began to look, and all around, every one of them had a big gold egg. And I heard the word of the Lord, these are about to hatch. And I said, you know, they, they came here and they, they're in the land of peace and these eggs are about to hatch. What does that mean, Lord, to the people? He said, they're about to have a golden opportunity in their lives. Mm. Wow. A breakthrough, a breakthrough, a breakthrough. And by the way, I'm seeing this in the spirit right now. Someone watching on this television network right now, your pain is leaving your body right now. I break the spirit of pain. You just got a breakthrough in that pain in the mighty name of Jesus. You told me that when you enter the land of peace, 
You don't have to battle. You don't no. have to fight. What do you mean? You know, like Joshua, he's at the edge, Sid. He's on the borderline. You know, God says, arise now and go over this Jordan. When you look at it, it looks like an impossibility. People are watching tonight that they're standing against the, the impossibilities, but prophecies and words have been said over them, and they keep thinking, when am I going to get my breakthrough? When am I going to cross over into the land of promise and peace mm -hmm. and prosperity? They're standing there. And, you know, Joshua, one thing that I'm sure he was worried about is, you know, we know that by what? You know, Moses' and spies had saw earlier, there's going to be some battles over there. But God assured Joshua because of the covenant, because of the word, that when he got, they got over on the other side, that everything would be all right. Number one, the miraculous crossing would take place. Just walk to the edge by faith, carry the ark, the glory, the, you know, the story, the whole story. They cross over. It happens to be the time of harvest. So somebody's going to enter their harvest now. It's time for your breakthrough to come rolling in. It's going to come rolling in. But also, when they got over there, you know, just imagine, you finally get to make your cross, and you're, you know you're in the land of, the, it's, it's the time of the harvest, and you get over there, Sid, and you're in this land of harvest, and what do you come up against? The walls of Jericho. Nobody had ever penetrated those walls before. Now, they're in the land of peace. They're in the land of promise. They're in the land of prosperity. But there's an obstacle in their right. way. Well, what did God do? He gives another instruction, and the instruction was, if you'll obey me and do exactly what I said, there'll be no need for no warfare, no battle here. And what happened? The walls, the thing that was stopping them, come tumbling down by a simple, you know, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Huh? It's just what it is. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. That's what Isaiah says. So what, they're ready to eat the good of the land, but there's a problem. And God says, just do a little simple act, just by faith, a little prophetic act. And what happens? Boom, the walls come down. They walk right in. And what the Lord said to me right there, he said, when you get to the place that you're in the land of peace, Keith, in your dreams, or you're just meditating on the land of peace, know that I'm the Lord and the battle belongs to me. I'll fight the battles for you. <laughs> I, I love this, this, this revelation that you had on the land of peace. And, and by the way, I heard that people with heart conditions, with back conditions, pain in your back, problems in your body, the, the bones in your spine, you're being healed right now. Anything you need in the heart area. Uh, Keith, did God show you? people that would be healed? Yes, he did. Just, just while you were speaking right there, I saw midsection miracles. That's from the chest down to the knees. There are people right now that are being healed right in their midsection. You've been having problems maybe in your digestive tract, mm -hmm. you know, different parts of your body. Some of you right above the knees there, there's been some poor circulation and stuff. I prayed for a guy the other day in a service and he was numb. He couldn't feel anything below his waist. And right above the knees is where, they, where he'd had the problem. Suddenly the feeling came back. I was in a grocery store a few days later shopping, getting some you know, items in the grocery store. My daughter, this guy comes up and taps me on the shoulder and said, you remember the guy who was numb? That's me. I'm totally healed. Somebody is getting their miracle right now. Uh, you tell me that when people enter the land of peace, their whole outlook on life changes. Yeah. You know what I've noticed, Sid, that when I, when I, when I proclaim this message and, when, you know, the churches that I've been in and the places I've been, the different places that I've said this on air, when we say this, we get report after report after report. You know, you know, I, I just didn't have, my, you know, the Bible says hope deferred makes one sick. And said, so I've just been going through a time of just down, discouragement, sickness. But since you preached that, we, get, we got the CD and we've been playing it. And, you know, it, it, whether it's at a conference or a church I'm at, they say, you know what? I just feel so encouraged. I feel so lifted up. I feel like I got a whole new outlook on my life. It's amazing that what a word from God can do. It wasn't my word. It came from heaven. It's amazing what a word word from God can do to change your life. It just takes one word or one minute from God to get your breakthrough. And you told me that as you enter this land of peace, you begin to sleep better, but even better than sleeping better, you begin to dream. Dream. We've been ha tell, tell me what reports uh, you're getting. Oh, from oh, let me tell you, we, we've had so many people that have been going through so much, very difficult times in their life. And I would proclaim this message because it came to me in a dream. They would just get the CD or they would just go home after I said the message and they said, they would come back with this testimony or they'd email us at, you know, my Facebook page. And they would say, here's what's happening. They would say, we went home after hearing the word or playing the CD from your, your message and we played it. And you know, our whole life 
life has changed. Things, we're, we're not only sleeping better, but we're having dreams about God. We're not having, you know, dreams like we had before of worry and fear and fretting and all that stuff. We're having actual dreams about God. You know what? If you, it's scriptural, Sid, because you remember when Joseph went down to Egypt, he was, you know, he was sold out, went to Egypt. Who started having dreams? The butler, the baker, and even Pharaoh. Right. You get around a dreamer that's prophetic, you start having good, godly mm -hmm. dreams. And a dream is what brought Joseph to the top. Uh, let, let me ask you a question. If a little later on in the program, I was to ask you to pray a supernatural prayer that everyone in the audience, everyone viewing, could enter the land of peace. Do you believe God would do that? You know, Sid, I believe that anything in that Bible, we can have it. I believe anything. You know, when I'm sure, you know, when Moses came up to the, you know, the, when he was trying to bring the children of Israel, you know the story. They, they, turned, they went and got some samples, some grapes, brought them back and said, it's just like God said. But you know what? We, there's giants in the land. And so many times the enemy says, well, you can't enter that because, you know, you've got giants in your life. You've got problems. But you know what I found out? God is a great fixer and God will not give up till you win and he wins. He is a winning God. And I believe if I pray that prayer, I believe people are going to start going into the land of peace. They're have that mindset that things are going to get better, things are going to get good, and I believe many people are going to start having good godly dreams. I, I do, and I'll tell you something else. God just told me there are people with pain in your fingers. You just start moving them, and the pain is going to be gone in Jesus' name. And you with the back problem, if you tried before and the pain was still there, try one yeah. more time. Stand up. Go ahead. Bend over, and you'll see the pain is gone. Now, when I come back, I'm going to ask Keith to release the greatest key he has found to entering the land of peace. We'll be right back. Yeah. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Everywhere you look, there's conflict and violence. We hear the bad news instead of the good news every day. Stress and anxiety appears to be the norm and not the exception. It's affecting many with a manifestation of emotional and physical sickness. Yet the one true God of Israel is referred to as Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And he promised, I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. Leviticus 26, 6. Keith Ellis wants to share with you divine keys on how you can access and live in God's supernatural land of peace. Call now and get Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400. Through this powerful revelation by Keith Ellis about living in God's land of peace, you will receive fresh and renewed hope for your future even in the midst of the present world shaking. See insomnia healed and begin to have sweet dreams from heaven. Begin to hear God's voice and direction clearly. Start to make better decisions to live in wisdom and walk in the destiny and purpose that God has set before you. Find that demonic interference will no longer affect you. Experience supernatural healing in your mind, spirit, soul, and body. You will also receive a copy of Keith Ellis' book, One Minute with God. Through this book, you will enter into life-changing, ongoing God encounters for the rest of your life. Get prophetic words you need concerning your future. Successfully encounter the glory of God's presence, releasing miracles, prophecy, and revelation. Learn how to transfer this same anointing to others who need God encounters. Included on the audio CD teaching is a special prayer of impartation by Keith Ellis so you can begin to access God's land of peace. One minute with Jesus is worth a lifetime of favor, a lifetime of favor. That's all it takes is that one minute because you need nugget after nugget after nugget and the overflow from Keith's life is going to pour on you. Don't miss out on getting Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400 or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9400 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. 
We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, first of all, I really want to thank WHT, the World Harvest Television Network, and Leslie Broadcasting for partnering with us. And I want to mention to you my next live show. I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to be Perry Stone live. It's going to be on May 26th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Remember, this program continues on, by the way, on ISN. It's Supernatural Network. After, as a matter of fact, if you have the app, it's a free app. All you have to do is take your smartphone or your computer, go to the app store, type in my name. You know my name, Sid Roth. And an uh, orange app will appear. It says, It's Supernatural Television Network. Get that, load it, and you're, this, this is what I'm gonna have Keith do. I'm gonna have Keith talk about major, major keys in the land of priests, but more important, he's gonna pray a supernatural prayer. And many of you have sent your prayer requests in. We have them all. We're gonna agree in prayer, and some haven't. Be sure to send your prayer requests in, and we're gonna pray over all of those uh, prayer requests. Uh, we have, uh, I, I believe that is, Keith is going to teach when we come back on the land of peace. That I, I don't, I, some of you are feelers and some aren't, but I, I have been, how, how about you, studio artists? Have you been feeling a lot of peace? Whoa. I have been, I mean, it is so, you know, doctors say that if you can get rid of stress, you can get rid of over 90% of the physical problems that you have. Uh, Keith, <laughs> God has shown you something recently about Israel. Yeah. What has he shown you? You know, Sid, the, the Lord has been showing me for the last couple of years there's going to be a major move of God in Israel and uh, all over the Middle East. Uh, all over the world, actually, we're beginning to come into the greatest revival we've ever ever had and the greatest harvest of souls. And, you know, uh, it's just, there's going to be some historical uh, events that are going to happen. The Jews are going to uh, come in, you know, they're going to come into the Messiah, they're going to get saved. But what's going to happen is there's going to be major miracles that's going to cause so many people to come across the Middle East to come to the Messiah. What kind of miracles have you seen in your dreams? What I happen? saw in my dream is creative miracles, like somebody missing a finger or missing an eye or, you know, missing a wrist or an arm or a hand or a foot. And suddenly this, you know, God, you know, he's the creator, God is. And he can, he can sure fix what, what he made and what God's been showing me in the dreams. That, and actually, I've actually saw dreams where people's arms and legs that were missing grew out in the dream and actually formed. And, you know, he said that we do the works that he did, Jesus did, and greater works. Well, I feel like we're moving into the greater works. The Jews require a sign. That's what they require. The Bible says to the Jew first. So I believe there's going to be a move of God among the Jews, not only in Israel, but all over the world, because Jews are everywhere. I believe there's going to be a move of God, a revival among the Jews. They're going to come to Jesus. And also, I believe that there's going to be a move of God all over the Middle East. I'm talking about all over, and then it's going to spread all over the world. Can you imagine what's going to happen when these Orthodox religious Jews and these radical Muslims have encounters with with Jesus, and then they're not going to be radical for Jesus. They're going to be normal for Jesus. <laughs> normal is defined by the Bible. We're going to get this job done when Jews and Arabs become one yes, new man yes, in Messiah. Yes, Watch yes, out, yes, devil! Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, now, now, Keith, you were talking about some of the greatest keys uh, it, it, to live in the land of peace. Uh, uh, one key has to do with rest. Yeah. Explain. 
You know, it said, the Lord said, be still and know that I'm God. And you know, one thing that I have learned, and this is, God had to teach me this over many, many years of ministering and going and praying for the sick. You know, I, I thought I was going to get the whole world saved by myself. Get the, you know how you are, you're a young preacher, you're starting a, a, a seminary, I was going to get the whole world saved. And then I realized, I, I, you know, I just kept going and going until I just I collapsed. And I was just going every day, every night, every night. And then the Lord said, why don't you just come aside and rest? You know, Jesus said to the, to the disciples, let's just come aside and rest a while. And when I begin to come aside and rest, steal my mind. See, what the enemy wants to do more than anything else is to cause broken focus in our life. He wants us to focus on everything else so we won't focus this way. Because our help's coming from above. Our help's coming from God. In fact, that person with that, those crooked fingers that are so mm -hmm. gnarled, I just saw a lady healed of that. The, the, the Bible says that, he says, I'll make every crooked place straight. Those fingers are being healed right now. They're going to start snap, crackling, and pop, and straighten out. I just saw a woman the other night with a crooked finger like that just pop up straight out in the service. Mm -hmm. She went wild. Her children said, Mama's been like that all of our lives. Suddenly, that's the beginning of the creative miracle that we're talking about with the Jews and all over the Middle East and all over the world. And it's because I got still before God, listen to God, Jesus wants to speak to us, Sid. He's, he is a talking God. He, he, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. I mean, we got God on the inside. But if we're so busy, I mean, we're being, he's being quenched. He's being hindered. You know, he's being grieved. But if we just get still, I just begin to go set before the Lord. David went and just set before the Lord. That is a super key right there. And then you get your mind still. You get your mind out. And things keep trying to come in. You know, what about this? And what about that? What, mm -hmm. and you just, you just got to keep on. And I pray in the Spirit. I pray in my natural language. And, I, you know, I just keep praying. I, then I stop praying. I put on Fill This Temple, <laughs> the song we just heard, or other songs that are really good. And then I, when I get through with that, I just stop and sit still before the Lord and just wait. I say, Lord, I'm waiting. If it takes, sometimes my wife is even here. My wife will have dinner and she'll come to my office and tap on and say, dinner's ready. And then she won't hear anything. She'll go, no, nah, I'm going to put his dinner in the refrigerator. <laughs> because, that's the truth. Many, many times because I'm stealing myself before the Lord, being real still to know that he's God. And then once I, get, once I get my physical body, my natural body quiet, once I get my mind quiet, then I said, Lord, I'm going to open my spirit. I want to go to the land of peace. And Lord, you know what? I may nod out during this. It's okay because, Lord, my spirit is awake all night long. And you're a spirit God, and you're awake all night long. So you can just download the land of peace, the land of prosperity. You, you know, speaking of downloading, I want you to make sure you download our app. I'm going to have Jim Sonero back. Yeah. I'm going to turn Keith loose. We're going to pray for your yeah. prayer request. He's going to pray that you enter the supernatural land of peace. Remember, it's so simple. If you have a smartphone or computer, go to the app store, type in Sid Roth. It's a free app, high definition, and then get its supernatural television network and you can continue. We're, gonna, we're not going to miss a beat. I don't want you to mi miss. Remember, Psalm 122, 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thou shall prosper that love thee. The word peace in the Hebrew, heart peace. Wow. If you love Israel, you'll have heart peace. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit is a person, yeah. and we have to invite him, his presence. We have to welcome him. He has feelings. He has emotions, and he's looking for people that love him, and he wants to teach you, lead you, equip you. I'm going to ask Jim Sonero to say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Sing this. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, in his presence is fullness of joy, but fullness of peace, fullness of love, it's all found in the fruit of His Spirit being in our lives. So welcome the Holy Spirit into your heart today, not just into the room, but into your temple today. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
We welcome you. Come on, welcome the Spirit of the Lord into your heart today, into your life. We love you, we love you, Jesus. You are welcome. You are welcome here. Why don't you say it? You are welcome here. nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare you're a living hope your presence Lord I've tasted and seen of the sweetness of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord cry out Holy Spirit you are welcome here Holy Spirit you are welcome
sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. seated now we're getting prayer requests we have over 2,000 prayer requests that have just come in people are saying they're being healed uh, we just heard from Valerie and you remember the word of knowledge on hands instantly her hands were healed I'm telling you this is not just words. These are words from God. Keith, what is happening here? What's going on in the invisible world? You know, Sid, there's angels here, uh, holy angels of God, but uh, you know, also there is such a glory. There's like a glory that's moving across this, uh, your network, ISN, and across the people here. And what I'm seeing is there are floaters in people's eyes. A lot of people with floaters, and I rebuke those floaters, and we have those healed all the time, and their eyes are clearing up. And there are people that are sitting here with, and across the world that are having problems with your shoulders. I see a, a real problem in shoulders, and God is just fixing those shoulders. And the mighty name of Jesus, that you're going to begin to move that shoulder, and the pain is going to be gone. I just give you praise, Lord, for what I'm seeing here. Can we give God praise? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll tell you what, in this mo mode that we're in right now, these are thousands of people on this CD that are believing God, they, they're going to be healed, and I'm going to give you some grace. God gave me a lot of grace. I'm going to give you some grace right now. If your prayer request isn't in here, speak it out loud, and we're going to agree right now. Keith, you start the prayer, and I'll finish over these prayers. The ones, people at home that are speaking it out in the in the studio audience, and these thousands that are here. Father, I'm so glad that you're faithful. Lord, you taught us that you're not a man that you should lie. Lord, we we know that you tell us the truth in your word. The word is truth. Lord, we don't have to doubt it. We got confidence in the word. And you said that you sent your word and you healed us. You said that by your stripes we're already healed, 1 Peter 2.24. That all we have to do is by faith to reach out. You're a faith God and believe. And as people have reached out and contacted this great ministry, Messianic Vision, this supernatural broadcast, Lord, from all over the world, they're reaching out. And many will continue to reach out. They'll contact this ministry because they realize that the glory of God is on Sid Roth and over this ministry. And Lord, I see in the days to come that many miracles will happen, even starting now, that people will go back to the doctors and have great reports. And they'll say, you know what? It's, I, something happened when they were praying. And as Sid was praying, something happened in my body. I, I, I'm going to get checked, and when they go back to the doctor, they're going to see that there has been a healing, a miracle in their body, Lord. Thank God for good doctors, and I love to get those verified doctor's reports. But, Lord, many people, are, even after we go off the air, many people in the next few days are going to contact as a point of contact. It's supernatural. Messianic vision. And as they do, God, you're going to do many great things for them. I see it. I see it, Lord. You're going to do so many great things. In Jesus' name, heal these that are hurting and sick. Raise them up, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
and I plead the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that was shed by our Messiah who died was buried, rose from the dead, seated at the right hand of God the Father, and we are seated with him in heavenly face places. That means that all sickness, all the demonic, it's under Jesus' feet, and we're in his body, so it's under our feet. And I trample all sickness and all poverty and all unbelief in the name of Jesus, the Messiah of Nazareth, and I plead the blood of Jesus and I tell yes. you that every yes, prayer yes, yes. request that is here is answered. <laughs> yes and amen. So be it. Ha. <laughs> Take that, devil. Yes. Ha. Wow. <laughs> Keith, talk about, talk about the land of peace. Because let me tell you, when you talk about the land of peace, there's an anointing on your voice, and it just penetrates everyone. You know, I, I, I just feel like right now, Lord, there's such an anointing here. How many feel the anointing? Wow. Look at this. There's such an anointing here that I believe anybody could reach up and say, Lord, I'm going to start getting still before you. I'm going to start praising you quietly in my, my prayer room. I'm going to start reading the word. I'm going to listen for your word. And, Lord, I'm going to get the dreams in the land of peace. How many believe they're going to get that shout? See, I see somebody being healed in their feet and legs. There is a, there's an impartation here right now that somebody's been having pain in their feet and legs and maybe even in their knees. I see especially a foot, and God's going to heal that right now, right in this auditorium. If you, will you believe for that? Somebody say, Lord, I thank you that right now enough is enough. I'm healed in my legs and feet. And if you were hurting there and you feel like God healed you, stand up and give God praise right now. Stand up and give him praise. Thank you. Thank you thank there it you. is. Huh, huh, at home, you stand up. Stand too. up at home. You're not Swiss cheese. We're talking Come on. to you. Come on. Stand up Come at on. home. Receive Come what on. God has for you. Now, be seated, and then you may have to jump up again. But be seated, because God spoke something in my ear that I've never heard before, but it's God. Ha, <laughs> devil. Devil is not going to like this. <laughs> he will not like what I'm about ready to say, but it's too late. I'm going to say it. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Sikenu, I bind the spirit of death. I yes, bind yes. the spirit of yes. cancer. I command you, spirit of cancer, you get off of God's people. I tell you. I tell you, you cannot touch, you can't penetrate the bloodline. I plead the yes. blood of Jesus yes, yes, over yes. all of God's people, yes. the precious blood of Jesus. And I tell you, by his stripes, you were healed. healed. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Keith, tell me about worry and fear in the land of peace. Tell me about pro what problems do we have in the land of peace? Well, you know, Sid, what happens is so many people are so stressed out in this day and hour in which we live. And a lot of times we don't even realize that something, something's trying to come against us. You know, I, I want to tell you this right quickly. The other night God gave me a dream about Balaam in the Bible. And you know what? The, the king of Moab came to Balaam and said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise you up, give you a whole lot of money if you'll just go curse Israel. And you know what? He said, it sounds like a good idea. I think I will. I, well, he wanted to be raised up. He was a dumb prophet. <laughs> yes, he was, wasn't he? Whoa, was dumb. he? Wow. I mean, literally, was he? But you know what? In the dream, the Lord showed me something. He said, Keith, watch this. And I saw Balaam, and you know, he went to he went to the he went up the mountain with, with that king of Moab. And they went up the mountain and he looked down and there was Israel just in peace. Just quietly. They love God. And he began to try to curse them, and, and it just wouldn't work. So many, he said, man, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to try harder. And the king of Moab said, listen, I'm paying you to get this job done. They're down there, and we're on this mountain. We're in the north. He said, let's go try the south. So they went to the south. They got up on another mountain. And he tried cursing them again. It just flew right back because God had told Balaam already, you're not touching my people. You're not cursing my people. 
Somebody said, you know what? We've been to those two mountains. Let's find two more. And they went to four mountains. Three times he tried to curse Israel. But on the fourth mountain, you know what came out of his mouth instead of a curse? The blessing of Almighty God. He blessed Israel. And what I want to tell you is when you're in the land of peace, when you start having those encounters, when you start spending that quiet time, you're going to find out that God is going to let the blessings fall upon your life. And things that have come apart in your life are about to come back together. You know, I, I, I feel the, the presence of God is right for you to pray an impartation for everyone to enter the land of peace. I feel Would like you it's do there. That? Yeah, I do. Stretch your hands towards Sid and I, and we'll stretch our hands towards you. Father, we thank you for this great day that you've allowed us to live. Because every day, Lord, is a good day with you. We want to, be, we want to say tonight, Lord, forgive us for any sin in our life. Right now, Lord, forgive us. But right now, Lord, we need something from you. We need to be able to get peace in our lives, get to that place of peace, that land of peace. And, Father, tonight, you know, you've taken me there time and again lately, and many people that I've prayed for. So across this great network and across this great audience, Lord, right now I release freely I have received and freely I give. And, Lord, whatever you've given me, you're no respecter of person. You'll give someone else. So I bind that spirit of unrest. I bind those dreams that are not peaceful, and I loosen the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the only one that can help us anyway. He's the performer here on the earth. The Holy Spirit is going to help so many people to get peace like they've never had before. And I pray they'll have good godly dreams, that they won't have to go to bed and toss all night long, but they'll go to bed and dream all night something good that's going to happen in their life. Because I release something good right now, because the God that I serve is a good God. He's a good God. Give Him praise and glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I am so excited about the dreams that Keith has been having about the Middle East. You've been literally seeing so many Jewish people having miracles and coming to God. Paint me a little more of that picture. I like to hear that. T tell me about the Jewish Express you've okay. been seeing this train. Yeah, for, for about two years, I kept seeing this train, you know, in my dreams. And it was incredible because this tra train had a sign on, on the side of it that said the Jewish Express. But you know what? Sid's a Jew, and, and I got Jewish blood in me. And so we were, I mean, I was really excited. I've been praying for the Jews most of my life that Jesus would save the Jews, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And you know what? Because I've been praying for the peace of Jerusalem, you know what? I got to go to the land of peace. How about that? <laughs> but you know what? That's what it says. You just quoted it earlier, that scripture. So that's what happened. And so, you know, in these dreams, I started seeing this big train that you couldn't see the end of the train. It was so long. And it would stop. And guess what? The Jews would get on board. And that God said they're getting on board. They're, they're, the, the scales are coming off. They're coming into the kingdom for such a time as this. You know, you know what I'm reminded of in Romans 11? It tells the call for the Gentile believer in Jesus. Salvation has come to the Gentile to provoke the Jew to jealousy. As if to say, live your life, speak your words, so Jewish people will want what you have. So you might say the call of the Gentile is to reach the Jew. Well, if the call is the gent of the Gentile is to reach the Jew, what is the call of the Jew? who were the first given the gospel to take the word of God to the Goyim, to the nations, the Jews. I believe that when Jews get on fire for Jesus, it's going to be such a quick work, yeah. but it's a stronger anointing. It's not just the Jewish anointing. It's not just the Gentile anointing. It's the two merging together. Paul is beside himself in the book of Ephesians, where he said, the middle wall of separation has come down between Jew and Gentile to form one new. Now, you think I'm going to say man, but I'm going to say what the original Greek says, 
one new humanity, yeah. one wow. new species wow. of being that never existed before. And some of you are black, and some of you are white, and some of you are yellow, and some of you are brown, uh, but none of you know who you really are. You <laughs> are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You yeah. are a child yeah. of God. You have Jesus himself inside of you. So stop having your head down and your eyes on the ground. Look on the ground. You raise your head. Yeah. You realize you are the hands and mouth. You touch and feel and love and let Jesus start expressing himself to you. You know something my wife and I do every morning? We talk to the to Holy Spirit yeah. and we say, Holy Spirit, I want divine appointments today. I want to meet the ones you want to love through me. I want to meet the ones that are hungry for you. And you know what? I am having so <laughs> many divine experiences and encounters with the Lord. What does the Bible say? You have not because you yeah, ask no. not. So start asking. What's God showing you? You know, the Lord's showing me that people's necks are being healed all across the network. They're, they're necks. They're having trouble. I mean, they, they got a pain in the neck. That's leaving right Did now. Did you call someone a pain in the neck? No. No, okay. <laughs> no I didn't. Remember, I say good things out of my mouth. That's true. I'm sorry. I, I, I said somebody's pain in their neck was leaving. And oh, I find okay. that pain and command it to go in Jesus' name. I believe there's some people in here, their necks being healed right now. I command those necks to be healed right now. And if you believe your neck was healed, stand up. Right now, stand if up, your neck was faith. healed, stand up. Look at this. Look at this, stand people. Up. Okay. You can do, you may you may sit down, but I'm telling yeah, you, yeah. everything that was next, stated next. is done. It's done in the spirit. You just have to thank God. You're saying, oh, it happens when I feel it. What kind of faith is that? No, it happens when the Word of God is spoken. Yes, yes. You believe it the minute the promise of God says yes. all things are yours. You believe it that second. You don't believe it when you see it. That's what makes you a new creation. You're not an old creation that says seeing is believing. You're a new creation that says believing is seeing. Right. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh. oh. Do you have a prayer that you want? Now. Yeah, I, I want. I do. I, I want to say something here. I want to thank the Lord for allowing us to be here with this great man of God. Yeah. Well, I thank the Lord for allowing me to be here. I can tell you and, that. And something else. I want to thank the Lord for the staff yeah, yeah. of Messianic Vision. Yeah. All the people that's making it. Your staff is one of the best in the world. I've been everywhere. Just one of the best in the world. We thank the Lord for their staff. Yeah, yeah. We thank the Lord for this vision this man has. And I'm going to tell you, this man has got a lot of work ahead of him because the Jews are going to start coming in, and we, he's going to have so many praise reports, he ain't going to know what to do with them. That's go you believe that, Sam? Uh, it's starting now. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it, it's been going on for a couple of years. Since you've been talking about the Jewish Express, more and more Jews have been getting aboard. Yeah, but I, I'm about ready. I can't announce it yet, but I'm going to make an announcement soon. And it is the, it's going to be the biggest thing that we have ever touched in our life, and I'll tell you this, it's going to affect the land of Israel for blessing, Thank you, Jesus. for blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And, and Sid, I know you and I, we, we, we love the anointing, but I want to thank Jim tonight. I agree. Because he, he how many believe he took us to another level? <laughs> Whoa, uh, wow. Hey, hey, Jim, did God give you any words of knowledge yes, tonight? Yes, as a matter of fact, as I was sitting over there when you were on the set here, the Lord spoke to me. There's a woman, I don't know if you're in this room or whether you're watching by the internet or however, but you've been healed in your uterus. That's wow. a very uncommon word, but actually there was such a pain there that it was unbearable and you were facing surgery and the Lord just told me that you're going to pass it and the pain is gone in wow. the name of Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh oh, uh oh, anyone with allergies, anyone with breathing difficulties, sinus problems, wow. you are healed in Jesus' <laughs> Whoa, name. Yes. I tell you that. Wow. And I'm going to tell you something else. I just prayed this before. I've got to pray it again. Psalm 122.6 has such a 
fabulous blessing for you. I want you to pray this every day. And someone with throat cancer or problems in the thyroid, you're healed in Jesus' name. God commands us in Psalm 122.6. He says, pray. He doesn't say if you feel like it. He doesn't right. say uh, if, you, if you want to. He says to command, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper. And in the Hebrew, the word prosper, they shall have heart peace. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thou shalt have heart peace for those that love you. And Genesis 12, 3 is always true. Yesterday, today, and forever. I, God, will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Yes. And I tell you, the greatest blessing for the Jewish people is to provoke us to jealousy by telling us, Jesus! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoa. Everywhere you look, there's conflict and violence. We hear the bad news instead of the good news every day. Stress and anxiety appears to be the norm and not the exception. It's affecting many with a manifestation of emotional and physical sickness. Yet the one true God of Israel is referred to as Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And he promised, I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. Leviticus 26.6. Keith Ellis wants to share with you divine keys on how you can access and live in God's supernatural land of peace. Call now and get Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400. Through this powerful revelation by Keith Ellis about living in in God's land of peace, you will receive fresh and renewed hope for your future even in the midst of the present world shaking. See insomnia healed and begin to have sweet dreams from heaven. Begin to hear God's voice and direction clearly. Start to make better decisions to live in wisdom and walk in the destiny and purpose that God has set before you. Find that demonic interference will no longer affect you. Experience supernatural healing in your mind, spirit, soul, and body. You will also receive a copy of Keith Ellis' book, One minute with God. Through this book, you will enter into life-changing, ongoing God encounters for the rest of your life. Get prophetic words you need concerning your future. Successfully encounter the glory of God's presence, releasing miracles, prophecy, and revelation. Learn how to transfer this same anointing to others who need God encounters. Included on the audio CD teaching is a special prayer of impartation by Keith Ellis, so you can begin to access God's land of peace. One minute with Jesus is worth a lifetime of favor, a lifetime of favor. That's all it takes is that one minute because you need nugget after nugget after nugget and the overflow from Keith's life is going to pour on you. Don't miss out on getting Keith Ellis' three-part audio CD teaching on how to live 24-7 in God's land of peace. Plus, receive his anointed book, One Minute with God, for you or for you to give to a loved one. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9400 or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9400 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.